I just see so much potential in every, every kid that walks into my classroom, every student that walks into my, I just see a ton of potential. What are your gifts? Because we all have different gifts. And um, yeah, but, I, but like I said, that profession's not for me anymore. They've pushed me out. My views and what I believe is now considered white supremacist. In California right now, there's a push for this class called Ethnic Studies. And uh, actually, Gavin Newsom just passed right now that it's gonna be a requirement for graduation. My district decided to go ahead of it and say, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna make it a, a requirement for graduation now. And I kind of already had a feeling that it was gonna be a lot of like, I mean, I guess the best way to put it is bashing on America, bashing on our history, bashing on just our country. I had no idea how bad it was. Because we are teaching online, we have most of our materials online and us teachers share the same platforms. And the teacher that taught ethnic studies at my site, she actually had the same platform that I was using and I was able to see all of her lessons. And it was shocking what I saw. It is dividing America based on race. And it's hyper race focus. So whenever you see hyper race focus, you're gonna see racism along with it. So for example, they have this term called hegemony in, in, in critical race theory, which means that America was built to only help the white man and everything else, uh, all of the institutions that were put up were either were, were put in there to benefit the white man and, and to oppress everybody else. And so there, our students are learning about these concepts. We hear about critical race theory, in our schools, well, here it is right in front of you. And almost every single lesson had some sort of element of critical race theory. I mean, there was even a slide on Marxism. Um, and these are like interactive slide presentations that were given to the students. So this wasn't like the teacher's plans or whatever. This is what the students actually got. Like, for example, I got, I got a gift for my district for being black, a black teacher. And I get this gift and um, it's only for black educators. And it's just, it, it was just such a pandering gift and because I didn't accept it, um, I got attacked. You know, like, because I didn't accept this gift that's, that had stickers in it that said, I love being black. It also had an, I, a black educators matter mask. I decided that, you know, this needs to be exposed. And it's just really sad and dark. And so if you're wondering whether or not critical race theory is a good thing for our country, start speaking against it and see how people treat you. <laughs> you'll, you'll start seeing how bad it is because they will, that's when the real racism starts. If I said anything about this while I was still in the school and on campus and that I'm the minority, you know, like that there's so many people that are, uh, I mean, we have teachers that say that they're Marxists on my campus and um, that they're really pro critical race theory. And I knew that I was gonna be the minority. And also my district is not very kind to people that don't go along with whatever agenda they're trying to push. So we made the decision to move to Florida. It was, it was a very easy decision, I'll say. Florida's a wonderful place, and I really, um, the people here are just a lot more friendly, and um, I just feel a lot more accepted here. I feel like there's more people that um, will accept me for me, and I don't have to pretend to be someone else or silence myself or censor myself like I did for so many years being a teacher in California. There's so much more to all of us, except besides what, we, what you see on the outside. It was actually uh, September 11, and I was at the time in junior college, and I was also very promiscuous. I was, you know, because I'm a sexual assault survivor, I just thought, whatever, my body is not my own, so I'm just gonna give it to whoever. I just remember seeing that and just being like, you know what, because I'm seeing my country be assaulted. You know, that was an assault on my country. It was just so shocking. And I was like, I'm not gonna let people assault me anymore. That mindset has just really, like empowered me to, to be more careful. Um, it really did kind of put me on a better path, just mentally, like I, am, I have more value than just letting people take advantage of me. I have my own story, you know? It, I truly believe that I have a story of victory and if I really have, if I really just embraced a victim mindset or had parent, a teacher or an institution telling me to embrace it and just, um, wallow in it, I know I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. We all have had 
uh, something hard in our lives. And we, but what's great about this country and where we live is that we can, be, we can change our lives. You know, I've, I've changed my life and for the better. And um, I just, I feel like now as a teacher and as an educator, I try and tell my students that, and it's like there's this pushback. It's so counterproductive and it takes away from individual stories.